Hello Internet and welcome to my workshop. Uh, this is my surface grinder. It's a Delta Milwaukee Toolmakers grinder. Um, it was manufactured in the 40s sometime, I think the early 40s, like 42 or 43, doesn't matter. Um, I will say that it's actually in, it's in really great condition considering its age, but it does need some attention and some work, um, which we will actually get to, but will not be a part of this video. Um, in this video, what I'm doing is finishing up a handful of projects that are kind of periphery to the surface grinder. Let's go over to the bench and I will show you what I've done so far. It's just two small things, but what we're going to be working on in this video is related to one of those things. So let's do that. Okay, so this is a wheel balancing jig. This is a project that I just finished and this is used to balance your grinding wheels before you put them into service on your surface grinder. And the idea is you get this thing all leveled up and you will lay your arbor across these pins and your wheel will be on this arbor and it will simply roll in one direction or the other and tell you whether or not the wheel is balanced. So for this video, the important thing is that we need to make the arbor upon which the wheel will go so that we can put it on this jig and get it balanced. In theory, this shouldn't be a very difficult project, but um, I am a, like a total idiot and a complete beginner and it does involve uh, a taper and it needs to be a fairly precision taper that will match with the taper on the inside of the wheel hub that goes on the grinder. That's it. That's what we're doing. We'll head over to the lathe and we will start knocking out this arbor. Okay, that actually took some doing, but we are all set up to turn between centers here. Uh, we need to turn this between centers because this thing needs to be concentric, obviously. Uh, as it's an arbor for balancing these wheels. Uh, I'm hoping this won't give me any issues, you know, as far as balance or anything like that goes with this big bolt uh, swinging around here. We shall see how that works out. I have a little drawing here so that you can just get a quick idea of what we're going to be doing. Total length of this thing is going to be six inches, which just happens to be about what that, what this bar is. I think um, it's going to be. 500 thou or one half inch throughout most of its length save for the taper that will interface with the wheel hub. This took a little doing to work out but I figured out it is a seven degree taper I believe anyway. Arbitrarily I chose one inch for the length of the taper because that should be more than enough. One inch was easy to work with because I had to do a little bit of, of math. So that's that, pretty simple. And I think we're ready to go. All right, so of course I started having problems right away. I don't know, I, I, you, you can see that, yeah. That <laughs> facet, it just, uh, it just ate away the cutting tip on my tool here. As soon as I fired up the lathe, uh, I could tell that it wasn't good. I was definitely getting some, some wobbling, I guess. It's the best way to describe it from uh, that balance issue uh, with that bolt. So that is gonna be an issue I know that there are some issues in the setup here, so I'm going to address those and then we'll get right back at it. Okay, uh, you can see what I've done here. I've just added a couple more bolts. They are not exactly the same size, but I literally had two bolts and four nuts left, so that kind of worked out perfectly. 
Um, <clears throat> like I said, they're not exactly the same size, but it is much, much better than it was. It's running a lot smoother now. So I think this will work out just fine and we can get back to it. All right, so I figured now was as good a time as any to bring you in for a quick update here. So hopefully you will be able to see from that footage that I just recorded that I continue to struggle with the bird's nesting from the 304 stainless. So this coolant is uh, really making a big difference in allowing me to push the tool bit faster and at least get something that's a little bit more manageable in my... Uh, bird's nests here. I don't want to call them chips because they're not. Um, we're down to uh, like the last 50 thou on this little spigot part here and we'll be to our final diameter. I did have to switch tools. <clears throat> had to switch to a much smaller tool. Two reasons for that. One is so I can get close enough to the center to actually get to my final diameter. The other tool was just too big. And second you'll see that this kind of hooks in here. And it's going to allow me to come right up to this hard corner here and uh, pull out and, and face a nice, uh, a nice smooth face when I get to the end here. So that is where we're at. We're going to go ahead and finish this part up and move on from there. So yeah, let's keep going. All right, we are back. I took the liberty of just going ahead and doing that second side of the arbor. It was just more of the same. I figured there was no real reason to film that. And we are all set up to cut this taper. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to show you uh, something that I think is useful, and that's how to make sure you're getting the correct angle when you are cutting a taper. So if you look here, there is no seven degree mark on my little indicator here. And this is what indicates what angle you're setting um, the top slide at. Um, this one here is graduated every two degrees. So you can see it goes from zero. Uh, then there's a slightly longer hash mark that indicates 10 degrees and then 20 degrees and so on. So seven degrees is somewhere in between um, six and eight degrees here, obviously. But exactly where, uh, you know, isn't really clear. And if you need this angle on your taper or whatever it is you're cutting to be precise, then this, this isn't going to cut it. Uh, and not to mention, you know, on these Chinese lathes, you know, there's really no telling how close this is in the first place, right? So even if it is, happens to be something you have a graduation for, can you really trust it? Probably not. So you have to have a way to find that angle and to be confident that you are where you think you are or where you need to be. So in that situation where you're either in between um, hash marks or you really need to make sure that you're on the right um, angle, in that situation is where your measuring tools and a little bit of trigonometry comes in. So the angle I want to cut is 7 degrees. And <clears throat> I can take my handy dandy uh, little calculator 
and I can find that the sine of 7 degrees is dot 1218. So the sine of 7 degrees in a right angle triangle of unit 1 is dot 1218. Here, if you can see that, is dot 1218 of those units, whatever those units are. So in our case, those units are inches. This is um, an imperial lathe, so our units are inches. I also know that my top slide here, um, one revolution of my top slide moves the top slide forward or in that direction 50 thousandths. So <clears throat> there are 1,000 thousandths in one inch. So 50 thousandths is 1 20th of that whole one unit. So if I take that sign that I originally got, which was, eh, sorry, this is so crappy, 121.8, blah, 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 blah. And you can see it up there where I did it already. And I divide that by 20 because I'm 1 20th of that whole unit. You can see that that gives me 6 thou. So if all of my math is correct, if I bring this indicator up to the work in my part or in my tool holder, bring the indicator up to zero, if I move this 50 thousandths set at this angle, which I'm hoping is seven degrees, then this indicator should move to show six thousandths. And if it does, we know that we're good to go. And if it doesn't, we know that we got to make some adjustments. So I'm going to move that forward one full revolution, which is 50 thou. So there's 20, 30, 40, and 50. And there we go, six thou. So I already, you know, tweaked this a little bit beforehand. I had to bump this thing around a couple times and make a couple adjustments to get it just right. But now I know that when I cut this taper, it's going to be a true seven degree taper. Well, as true as, you know, the janky wobbly top slide on a Chinese lathe can cut it. But I know it's going to be as close to seven degrees as I can get on the equipment that I have because I measured it and I know that I have it set correctly. So I thought that was useful and interesting. So I just wanted to show that real fast before we get started. And so now let's cut our taper. Okay, so here is the taper. Um, came out okay, I guess. Uh, I, I'm sure you can see here the small end actually, um, it actually came out quite a bit smaller than I had originally wanted. Uh, it's just barely larger than the arbor itself. 
Uh, I had a little bit of a mishap and I had to cut it out <laughs> so that, uh, or, or I had to cut it out so this thing ended up being a little bit smaller than I had originally wanted. Uh, the only thing left that I want to attend to is the surface finish. I think you can see that on the camera. The surface finish is not great. It's difficult to get a good surface finish out of the compound on this small um, import lathe. So I'm going to take some emery paper and attempt to clean this up while at the same time try and avoid changing the dimensions too much and try to not screw up the taper so that it doesn't work. So we're going to give that a shot and then once that's done I think we can probably move on to test fitting and see if um, at the end of all this work this thing's actually going to work out. So yeah let's keep moving and see where we're at. All right, here we are. Yeah, I think uh, I'm happy with how this looks. We just have to see how it fits now. So I'll pull this off of here and we will reconvene over at the bench, and see how this works out. <clears throat> All right, here we are. Um, I have my arbor and I have my wheel hub and so in case it's not obvious, uh, this is the wheel hub. There's a taper inside of here and the grinding wheels go on this arbor here. And then there's a cap, a nut that locks them on. And then this taper, um, this interfaces with the corresponding male taper on the spindle. And that's how you put the grinding wheels on the uh, surface grinder. So this is meant to mimic that taper on that spindle for balancing the wheels. So let's, uh, let's see if this thing fits. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll try and bang this on here, see if I can get it to stick. Oh yeah, 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 that's gonna work. That, yeah, that'll work just fine. Uh, it's not perfect, no, but all things considering, or all things considered, considering I'm the one that made it, and here's the balancing jig, and I mean, all that it has to do is just sit on here. So it just has to stay put enough to do this, um, which, obviously it's going to do because it's doing it. So I'm happy with that. I really am. That is quite honestly a bit of a surprise. I was not expecting to get this right. So yeah, totally stoked about that. Um, yeah, so uh, pops right off. Excellent. Very, very happy. Okay, cool. So that's done. Um, so one step closer to balancing a grinding wheel and using the grinder. Uh, last thing I think I have to do is to make the actual balancing kind of ring. Um, I'm going to attach that to this arbor 
somehow not exactly sure how to do that uh, or how I am going to do that. But um, the idea is there's a there's a couple of different ways to balance a grinding wheel, and um, you know I'll I'll get into more of that uh, when uh, I'll do the next video will be for that ring. So I'm going to call this a project success. Very happy with that. Um, and yeah, if you have watched for this long and if this video actually gets posted, this will be my first video if it makes it up to YouTube. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to do more in the future. So, um, you know, if, uh, if you had fun, stick around and hopefully there will be <laughs> more coming. But anyway, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm very happy and um, excited to share this journey, hopefully, um, because I'm, I'm really loving it. So yeah, success. Okay, thanks, bye.